Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created Phaser 3. Previously, we worked on enhancing our player input to go ahead and have a nice smooth transition when we move our player between uh, grid spaces and our world scene. If you missed the previous video, there will be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up, so let's get started. Alright, so now that we have our animation in place for moving between our two grid spaces, the next thing we want to do is we actually want to add animations for our player character. And then that way, as our player moves around our world scene, the character game object is going to face in the direction we press, and we'll have a nice walking animation uh, when we move our character. Alright, so to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to need to go ahead and create some animations for our player. Uh, so real quick, what we're going to do is we're going to jump into our assets folder, let's go into our images. We'll go ahead and go into Axel Art and our custom PNG. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create four animations, one for each of our directions, and then also have an idle frame for each of those directions. And so currently we're using our down frame right here. And so what we're going to do is we'll create one for our facing up and we're walking up. We'll have our idle frame. Same thing for right, left, and then also down. And so for us to do this, uh, what we'll need to do is we need to create those animations. And so to go ahead and do this, what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and create our animations inside our preload scene. Uh, so currently for our existing animations, so our attack animations, what we ended up doing is we have our logic for creating our animations inside our attack class itself. And instead of doing that, we're going to move our animation logic to our preload scene for our player and later on our attacks. And the reason for that is we only need to create this animation one time. And so if we restart our scene at all or come back to it, uh, so when we navigate from our world scene to our battle scene and back, we really don't need to recreate these animations over and over again when we create instances of our attacker player. Uh, we only really need it when we create our uh, first game instance of Phaser. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're just going to copy this block of code here for creating one of our animations. Um, so, and then we'll jump over to our scenes and then we'll go into our preload scene. And inside our preload scene, what we'll do is at the bottom of our class, we're going to add a new method and we'll make this private and we're going to call it create animations. And inside here, we're going to go ahead and paste our code. Uh, so we don't need this scene, it's going to be this and then same thing for this anims. And then what we'll do in our create method, uh, we'll go ahead and call this method. And so now what we need to do is we actually need to create our four animations, one for each direction for our player. Uh, so for our key, what we're going to do is we're going to call this player down. Uh, so we'll go ahead and use player uh, as our prefix. So these are tied to our player game object. And then for our suffix, this will be the direction that this animation is tied to. Uh, so down, left, right, and up. Uh, then for our frames, uh, we're going to use our generate frame numbers, uh, but we need to update our asset. So our asset is actually going to be our player asset. And then what we need to do is we actually need to provide a configuration. Uh, so originally for our attack animations, we use the whole sprite sheet to generate the whole frame for the animation versus for our player our character, our main character, we only want three of our frames when we create this animation. We don't want to use all of the frames from our sprite sheet. And so what we can do inside this configuration is we can add a property called frames, and this allows us to provide the exact frames that we want to use for this specific animation. And so this will be six, seven, and eight for our down animation. Then for our frame rate, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do six, and our repeat, we're gonna do negative one. So for our walking animation, as our player is moving around our game, we don't actually want the animation to stop until our player finishes their movement. And so we just wanna play this on repeat until they get to their destination. Uh, for delay, we'll have zero, and then we're gonna add a new property, yo-yo. All right, we'll go ahead and set that to true, and we'll go ahead and save. All right, and so what we're going to do is instead of creating all of our animations directly like this inside a preload scene, we're actually going to abstract this logic away to a JSON file. And the reason for that is as our game continues to grow, we're going to continue to add new animations to our game. And instead of manually having to create code for this every single time, we're just going to go ahead and load in that code from our JSON file once, and then we'll go ahead and iterate and create our animations dynamically. 
And so this works really well. So then that way, if we ever want to add new animation or update new frames, we just modify this JSON file and we only have to do it in one spot. And so to do that, what we're going to do is we'll come into our assets or data folder. Let's make a new file. We're going to call this animations.json. And so this is going to be an array of objects. And so for our object, basically what we're going to have is we're just going to have our same keys here with a few modifications. So if we copy that, let's go ahead and paste it. And what we're going to have is we're going to have key frames, frame rate. And we're just going to go ahead and wrap all these in uh, quotes real quick. And after yo-yo, we're going to add one more property. We're going to call this asset key. And we'll go ahead real quick and we're going to fix this to be our double quotes. All right, and so what we need to do is for our frames, currently we're referencing a function. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this up into two separate uh, components. Uh, since we can't keep our function name inside our JSON file, what we'll do is we're gonna move player to our asset key property that we added here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make frames optional, and that's going to refer to our array here. And the reason we're making that optional, so then that way when we have sprite sheets where we need to use all of our frames, we don't need to provide this property. All right, and so now that we have our first object, what we'll do is we're just going to copy this and let's paste it a few more times and we're going to go ahead and create each of our uh, animations. So we'll have right, we'll have left, and then we're going to have up. And now the only thing we should have to change on these is going to be our frames that we're referencing. Uh, so for player right, what we'll have is three, four, and five for our frames. Player left, we're going to go ahead and have 9, 10, and 11. And then player up, this is going to be 0, 1, and 2. Then basically all we're doing here is we're just referencing our sprite sheet here, and we're referencing the individual frames. Uh, so as an example for up, we have 0, 1, and 2, and so that associates with these frames here. And then for right, we have 3, 4, and 5, and so that associates with 3, 4, and 5 here. Then likewise for down and then for uh, left. All right, so now that we have our JSON file, uh, we just need to load this into Phaser just like we did with our other JSON file. Uh, so if we can come up to where we loaded it in our attack JSON file, we're going to copy this line of code. Let's go ahead and paste it. We're going to go ahead and change this to animations. And then we need to go ahead and add that to our data asset keys. So let's do that and call this animations. Go ahead and save, come back to our preload scene, change this to animations. And then so after we've loaded in our JSON file, we should be able to go ahead and get that from our cache and then use that to dynamically create our animations. So what we'll do is inside our data util, similar to what we did for getting our monsters attacks, we're gonna add a new static method for getting our animations. So let's call this get animations and so we'll just need a phaser scene that we need to get our cache from and what we'll do is we're just going to copy our const here and we want to go ahead and get our animations from our asset key and we want to go ahead and return our data and then what we can do is back in our preload scene now we go ahead and use our get animations method to go ahead and get our data. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do const animations will be equal to our data utils dot get animations and we'll pass in this for our scene. So with our animation data, what we just need to do is we just need to go through our array of objects and create our animations dynamically based on the object at that time. So to do that, we can just loop through our array. So we'll have animations for each. And we will have our animation object. And on our animation object, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just call this function here. And so what we'll do is for each of our objects, we're just gonna run this logic here. And so we'll create our animation. And then for our key, this is going to be our animation dot key for our frames we'll come back to that in a second and then for frame rate and everything else we just go ahead and reference that property so we'll have animation frame rate we'll have animation repeat animation delay and then we'll have animation yo-yo 
And then for our frames, what we'll do is we're just going to make a new variable. I just kind of break up this logic. So we'll do const frames. We're going to set it equal to our animation frames. And what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if this property is defined. So if it is defined, we know we need to go ahead and create our frames with our configuration here. Uh, so basically we'll need this whole line of code. If that property is not defined, then we want to call our generate frame numbers just with our asset key and we won't be providing our frames here. And so this will just be our animation dot asset key. And we're just going to copy this and we'll bring that over to here as well. We reference player. And then inside our frames here, this is going to be animation frames if it was defined. And now with our new property, we are going to go ahead and just pass that to our frames. And then real, oh, and then real quick, let's jump over to data utils. Ah, yes, so don't return. We need to actually return data so we actually have our animations. All right, so real quick, we're just going to go ahead and add in some of our types to our data utils. Uh, so I've come to data utils. Uh, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and create a type for our animations. And then that way we know what type we're returning and we'll have those properties uh, when we reference our method in our preload scene. So what we're going to do is let's jump over to our types. And we'll go into our type def.js file. Then inside here, we're going to add in a new type definition for animation. And so our animation is just going to be an object. And this is going to have the properties from our objects that we created our animations JSON file. And so we're going to have our key, uh, that'll be our string. Frames will be optional. And this is going to be an array of numbers. Well, our frame rate will be number. Same thing with repeat delay. And then yo-yo is going to be our boolean. And then finally, asset key will be a string. And so once we have our new type def, what we can do is back in our data utils. And then for our get animations, what we can do is we can add in our JS stock. And so we'll have our parameter of scene for our phaser three scene. And we're going to return our animation. And we'll also go ahead and add that to our type as well. All right, then back in our preload scene. Ah, yes. Yeah, so animation, uh, this should be animation delay. All right, so now that we've created our animations in our preload scene, what we need to do is now actually update our player game object to actually use our animations. So what we'll do is we're going to come over to our character. Let's go ahead and open up our player class. And for our player class, what we want to do is once we start moving our character, we want to go ahead and play our animation for the direction that was provided. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and override our move character method that currently exists in our character class. Um, however, we want to keep that same logic. And so we're going to go ahead and override it and we'll call our, we'll use super to go ahead and call our move character method on our character class. So what we'll do is we're going to come to our character class. Let's find our move character. Let's copy our code for move character. We'll come back to our player class. And what we'll do is go ahead and paste that. And for our logic, the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we'll call the super and we're going to do move character and we'll provide direction. And then what this will do, this is going to ensure we run our logic for our character class first. And then after that logic runs, this is now where we'll use our custom logic to go ahead and have our child instance go ahead and do some additional things, uh, player animations. So what we'll do is we'll do our switch statement. We'll do our direction. And we're going to go ahead and check which direction was provided. And so we'll have our case of direction dot down and case direction dot left. And we'll also have our direction dot right. And then we'll have our case of direction dot up. All right, so what we want to do is if any of our direction keys are pressed, we want to go ahead and play our animation with our suffix of the direction that was pressed. If direction none was provided, uh, if no direction key was pressed, then we don't want to do anything. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to add some code here. And we'll come back to explain in one second. So we're just going to do an if statement and we're going to do not this, our phaser game object, anims, dot is playing or this phaser game object 
anums dot current anum and dot key does not equal our player animation with our direction. And if that evaluates, we want to go ahead and play our animation. So we'll do our phaser game object dot play. And we will do player with our direction. And then real quick, we're just going to go ahead and add in our break statement. And we'll add in our case for direction dot none. And we'll do break. And then let's go ahead and add in our default with our exhaustive guard. And we'll do this dot direction. All right, and so what we did here is in our switch statement, if any of our direction keys are pressed, we want to go ahead and play our animation if it's not already playing. And so to check that, what we can do is we can use the anims property on our sprite game object to get our animation state component. And this component has various properties and methods for uh, checking the current state of our animation. And so is playing is a property that's going to go ahead and be set to true if an animation is actually playing uh, for our sprite game object. And so once we start moving our player and we call play, this property is going to be set to true. And so we're starting off by checking to see that if it's not, if one's not already playing, then we know we can start an animation. It's not going to affect anything. If it's already set to true, then we know there's an animation playing. And what we want to do is we only want to call play if we need to play a new animation. And then otherwise what will happen is every time there is a call to this method, we would restart our animation. So when we call play, if that animation is already playing, it's going to restart that animation and it's going to create a very weird cycle effect. And so... Uh, what we want to do is we want to check our current animation that's playing and if a different direction key was pressed then we play a new one if it's the same direction key so like if we're holding the right key down then we don't want to play that same animation again and so to get that logic what we do is we use the current animation property um, and what it's going to do if there's a current animation playing is going to be here and then when the dot key on that object is going to give us the animation name um, for what is currently being played and so then we're just checking it with player in our current direction as long as it doesn't equal the one that's currently playing we're going to go ahead and play that one all right, so if we come over to our world scene, we should be able to go ahead and test our changes. So now if we go ahead and press our right key, what we should see is our player now faces that direction and our animation starts playing and we see our player start walking. Likewise, if we press our other arrow keys, we now see our character moves in that direction and we get that nice animation. And so one of the things we need to fix is once we have no more input, our player game option should stop moving and our animation should stop. And we'll also want to go ahead and update our sprite to go ahead and show our idle frame all right and so now we have our basic animations working that actually brings this video to an end in our next video we'll go ahead and pick up where we left off and we're going to add in logic for stopping our animation once there's no more input and so as a reminder uh, there's a link in the description of the video to the complete source code for this video and as always thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the content if you did enjoy the video please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released for more great phaser 3 content please see some of the links on your screen now